eight. So, who here is ready for an amazing, amazing race? We have Rin and White Paws here in it out for Ori and Wine Forest Definitive Edition race. Uh, and we are going to be seeing some really, really masterful work. So I'd love to be able to turn it over to uh, the runners to see if, uh, runners and competitors to see if there's anything that we want to introduce for today's race showcase. Alrighty, so we're going to be watching a race between, of course, Renasar and White Paws, or in the Blind Forest Definitive Edition. Uh, these runners are pretty close. They actually started running the game uh, roughly at the same time uh, in January. They both really started grinding for it. Ren is coming into this one with a personal best of 29 minutes, and White Paws is coming in with a PB of 30.54. So almost a two-minute separation. Seems like it's a pretty big gap, but uh, both of these runners... Uh, are easily capable of you know putting putting together times close to their PBs and also the run is really difficult so you can see some mistakes from uh, from one end leading to a drastic lead shift uh, pretty quick so uh, I think with that we are pretty much uh, ready to go uh, we've got Grimilios with me on comms my name is Shafe and if the runners are ready we are ready to get started in five four three two one let's go let's go good luck rain yeah good luck. So yeah good luck both of you um as shafe mentioned ori is a uh a very difficult game uh, so even though uh, rin does have that faster pb by almost two minutes it's pretty easy to lose maybe not two minutes in one chunk but certainly two minutes cumul uh, cumulatively over over a number of things uh, here at the beginning of ori your moveset is pretty limited. We really only have the ability to run and jump. So we're going to start by going over to the left and grabbing Sign, who is going to be both our companion for the game and also our primary uh, attack, attack source once we once we pick him up. Yeah, and one of the things you're going to be noticing right off the hop here, uh, fun, fun, hopping, because they're hopping, uh, is that you're jumping around um, because of the way that the geometry works in this game. Uh, friction is effectively a thing and so if you're jumping in the air uh, you will not lose time when you're going uphill so as mentioned coming up to sign here are first of the skills 11 of them that we're going to be picking up in the game and a little bit of speed tech here right off the hop uh, there's an internal cooldown on signs shooting and so both of these runners who are playing on keyboard are going to be using the scroll wheel uh, to pace their shots in a very specific way to avoid that cooldown allowing them to move to the right continuously and get these shots off without stopping and get rid of the Fronkies and start heading on to our next skill, Wall Jump. Yeah, we have a little ways to go before we get there. No problems on either end so far, but I'd be kind of shocked if there were. Looks like pause maybe with just the tiniest of leads, but it's effectively meaningless at this point. Uh, one thing to keep in mind for this early portion of the run, and also to a lesser extent throughout the entire run, is that experience is going to be very important. Uh, experience and Ori comes in the form of these little yellow orbs that drop from enemies and also sometimes you pick them up in the environment. Once you get enough experience you level up and explode in a big shockwave which can be used strategically to take out enemies and also it gives you ability points which we'll be able to spend a little bit later. Yeah and that level up mechanic with both the blowing up and the energy and health refill uh, are going to come into play uh, in short order in about uh, five and a half minutes time we're going to use that uh, for a sequence break. So this is Ghost Door. Uh, put the keystones in the door, take a death. When you respawn, the gore door is temporarily despawned. Both runners heading for this optional health cell for a little bit of safety because a uh, section later on in the run is quite dangerous and you can get one shot. So for marathon purposes, both of them are going to be making sure they start the game with four hit points. So 2D Metroidvania platformer uh, means that we're going to be running around uh, not only to fulfill the category of all skills, um, but we have to go and pick up certain things to gain access to certain other areas, which unlock other areas, and etc, etc. So a couple keystones uh, collected here, extra one, which will be used for later. And then we head on down to wall jump. White pause with a little bit of a lead, just about one second, but the damage boost ahead from Rin gets him uh, in the lead just slightly as White Paws mismanaged their XP just a little bit and had to double back for some extra spirit light. So a quick lead change here early on. 
Yeah, coming up uh, on the left here to wall jump, which is kind of the first proper skill that we get from a skill tree. This skill lets you do exactly what it sounds like, but in Ori, as opposed to some games, especially 3D platformers, wall jump lets you jump infinitely up certain walls unless, of course, the slope becomes too steep or there are spikes or something that knock you back. Uh, our path out of the wall jump area is to the right, but we're going to start by going up to the left to get energy. Uh, you don't, strictly speaking, need any additional energy than you start with in order to beat the game. But we do need it to go uh, fast, especially for some skills we get later which will consume energy. And here's that level up I mentioned. First from Rin coming up from pods just a moment later, we use it to clear out a bunch of brambles that we skipped by falling through the platforms on the way down. Yeah, little minor optimization there, just jumping off the corner of that log, affectionately known as Trojan Log. Rin does take a hit, slowing him down just a little bit, allowing pause to catch up some of that minute lead that was built up, damage boost through the slime, completely intentional, and a little pirouette off the platform to head back to the right towards Dash, where you're going to see the first instance of the trick Save Anywhere. Save Anywhere is performed by opening up the ability menu, which normally freezes Ori, but uh, we can trick the game into thinking that we have closed it, and that allows us to move behind the ability menu with it still up, and when you level up an ability on the ability tree, the game saves. This has a um, multitude of interesting effects, and one of the most uh, prestigious ones throughout the course of the run will be skipping cutscenes. So you see the runners here walking into the slow zone, leveling up the ability to save, and when they reload, the cutscene is skipped. The slow zone persists, so they have to do a little bit of a slow walk there. And now we are in Black Group Burrows, uh, an area that was added in the definitive edition of the game where we are going to pick up the Zoom Zoom skill dash. Yes, uh, but before we get there, we have to traverse the uh, darkness. Black Group Burrow is, uh, in a speedrun context, is very cycle-based. Uh, these runners are going to be trying to move quickly for the sake of going fast, but also because they want to catch certain cycles. And, oh my goodness, Rin, almost with the death there. On three health, that would have been an instant death. With that early fourth, it is still alive. They have to jump up to get a little bit of additional experience to grab another level up before making a save. Well, they'll be making a save shortly. Also, man, Rin just taking little bits of damage. They've certainly equalized so far, I think. Yeah, that uh, damage, of course, as in many games, gives you a bit of a knockback effect, and that has uh, allowed pause to... Uh, stay relatively close here in the early game. Rin is going for the fast cycle, did not get it, as you alluded to, Grimelios. Cycle-based platforms here. You're going to see both runners pause after they jump off onto this ledge here. And that's to manipulate uh, the cycles in the next room. They aren't loaded just yet, but as Rin moves to the right, they start loading now. And uh, it ends up being just a nice little manipulation to save a little bit of time. Both runners choosing to not take out that slime, unless I'm mistaken, that may be uh, an issue with their experience count. You notice both runners have their user interface on, whereas they'll actually choose to have it off for portions of the run because that auto skips dialogue. Uh, it looks like they're both right around the same experience level. I yeah. oh, white pause misses the cycle. That's an eight second time loss. Actually, pretty significant uh, this early in the run, uh, giving Rin a bit of a lead to work with. But uh, there is a slime outside of Black Root Pearls, which gives three XP if they feel that they want to get just a little bit closer, but they both look fine for uh, the trick coming up called Fronky Walk. So another save anywhere here to skip a cutscene, and uh, Rin is going to be going for um, a new strat here, where he opens up the save anywhere, skips the cutscene at the pedestal, then walks back and does a rekindle uh, reload, which is effectively sort of functionally the same in terms of allowing us to skip cutscenes. Yeah, there are multiple ways to skip cutscenes using those save points, which we'll see uh, a number of times throughout the run. This is Dash. Uh, you'll be able to see what Dash does right there. Rin with a little bit of blind movement on the left. Again, with a, just a little bit of lead, maybe 8 to 10 seconds over pause right now. I would recommend directing your attention over to the left as Rin is going to be the first to begin begin his Fronky Walk. What does Fronky Walk do? So these little creatures uh, that Rin is going to aggro right here are called Fronkies because they look kind of like frogs and monkeys. And uh, the experience management that we were talking about earlier, uh, this is one of the central reasons that we're doing it. Normally, uh, in a vanilla playthrough, you would have to go all the way around to Sea Flame and then in the swamp and loop back around to go down to double jump. But with the two energy that we have and this Fronky that we're luring, 
to this four energy door over to the right here. We can put two energy in the door, kill the Franky, level up, refill our energy, allowing us to have four net total energy inserted into the door and Ren oh, almost misses wow. it, just manages to save it at the last second. And this allows us to sequence break into Grotto uh, significantly faster to go and get double jump. Yeah, we will still be getting uh, all the skills that we need since the category is obviously called all skills, but it ends up being faster to skip to some of the later ones a little bit sooner. Rin doing a good job of getting through this area we call the Death Gauntlet before dropping down into the grotto. Oz taking his attempt at it too. We call this area the Death Gauntlet because there's a lot of stuff that can smack you for damage. Yeah, and taking a death there is very significant. Grotto cycle skip coming up here for Rin does get it. Well done. That's tight. Does save around 8 seconds uh, to be able to get through those crushers on that cycle. And momentarily we'll see whether or not Paws can get it. Uh, worth noting here, Gamelios, Rin has kind of had a lot of close moments that could really have cost him. Whereas White Paws is just kind of slowly losing time other than uh, missing the Blackbird cycle and now the Grotto cycle here. Yeah, and Rin actually, some things that, that he said during practice is that he tends to play very, I don't remember his exact wording, but very aggressively. Like, even when Rin was just learning, or he tended to go for the hard strats almost immediately, as opposed to easing into them using easier strats, so that might result in Rin getting a very, very fast time. It might result in some punishing deaths later. Yeah, and one of one of those strats, which we'll talk about when we get to it, that Rin will be doing, uh, that Paws won't, is called a crazy juggle uh, in Sorrow Pass, and he was doing that when he was a 34 35 runner which is um well ahead of <laughs> what runners will normally start tackling that trick on so white paws now grabbing his double jump and grotto skip coming up here for Ren. yeah grotto skip is a very wow just beautiful nothing else to say about it that is a jump that lets you skip the left lower portion of uh of grotto it's just a wall jump but it can kind of give you troubles if you overthink it rin definitely expanding that lead on the left due to a number of mistakes by white paws but also i think just generally execution that's a little bit better so far mm -hmm. if you all are given what you're seeing right here you still have a little bit more to go for the glitch exhibition so please definitely get those in and put them towards the ori glitch exhibition only a little bit of time left to go and do that everyone thank you for there are a lot of glitches in this game and so almost exactly a 30 second gap here uh, between Rin and, and Paws right now, uh, timing based off of that rekindle cutscene skip. So Rin's got a fairly comfortable lead here uh, in the early going, but uh, still a lot that could uh, end up hindering either runner really. So we could either see a massive lead for Rin or this could go very disastrously, disastrously for him in short order, bringing White Paws back into it. Yeah, Rin's objective right now, and pause as well, of course, is that they're approaching the first dungeon, which is called the Ginso Tree, and to get there we have to climb up and out of Grotto, which we dropped into early using the Franky, uh, Franky Walk. Over on the left here, Rin taking another uh, intentional level up that also happens to take out a number of these slimes, has to pause, so just a split second to not smack into the Franky is also going to take a pit stop, just like we did in Grotto at a teleporter. <laughs> Never mind! And um, just like that, pauses ahead. That is a very, very time lossy death. Yeah, that lost him, I would say, on the order of about 45 seconds. Uh, what Rin was trying to do there was uh, beat the uh, the hazard cycle there, those little spinning mace thingies. Um, and so he dashed, thinking that he was going to get past the first of them, and then just sort of reflexively dashed again and ended up taking two hits and a massive death. So pause now, uh, not with a 30 second advantage over Rin, but still uh, pretty sizable. He will lose a little bit of time collecting that ability cell because he's not going to go for the crazy juggle strat, uh, but he's he's got a bit of a lead to work with now, that's for sure. Yeah, and as opposed to pushing this rock over to the right, which is intended, you can kind of squeeze through with the dash. Again, you don't have to activate that teleporter, you just have to touch it in order to allow it to be teleported to later. A quick damage boost through the slime. Well done, and we are quickly approaching the entrance to the Ginso tree. And Rin continuing to have trouble, did not pull that rock back far enough to be able to get that dash uh, in between the rock and the ceiling, so lose a, lost a little bit more time there. He is going to go for a game storage trick here, I believe. No, he's just going with the uh, basic rekindle cutscene. I think here. Rin had discussed. Well, maybe. Nope, nope, there it is, yeah. Okay, so game storage is basically menuing fast right there uh, in order to set the state of the game and sort of like, keep it active. And then when you reload, you've kind of got two game states going on at once. 
that allows Rin to move while this cutscene is playing, basically, is how that works. And he's going to be doing that again uh, very late in the run uh, as we go to the final dungeon. So, uh, Grimelios, this is where we pick up uh, the iconic skill bash uh, in the Ginzo Tree. Before we get to that, you want to sort of give a heads up about uh, what that skill does and some of the tricks that we can do with it. Yeah, so Bash, uh, as Shaif mentioned, could be considered or as iconic skill. I would argue it's its most unique skill. What Bash lets you do once we pick it up is grab onto certain projectiles, enemies, or world objects and throw them in one direction while you throw yourself in the other direction. And I say you throw yourself in the other direction. It's actually possible through some speedrun tech to uh, manipulate or its trajectory after you bash something, but it is going to be a very powerful movement tool and in a sense turn enemies into, into movement tools. The Rin's clean movement has caught him up a little bit here uh, entering this fight. It was only about a four second advantage for White Paws. So uh, despite some of that nerves and spaghetti that happened uh, after taking that death, uh, Rin's still buckling down and doing what he needs to do uh, in order to get himself back in this race. And intentional damage here being taken. Uh, the runners are manipulating their health very specifically for another ghost door coming up, coming in here to collect a few keystones. And... A little bit of a safe dash there from White Paws. Uh, good setup though for the damage boost right there. Drops down, collects another keystone, and ideally you want to have your save buffered, hit the ground, jump up into that bramble. Both runners are executing it very well. Yep, good job on the mini boss a while ago too. Here is the tree that gives you bash. You'll see it in use uh, almost immediately. You'll also start to see double bashes. What double bashes is, is a frame perfect trick made significantly easier through use of the scroll wheel that lets you throw both yourself and an object in either the same direction or very close to the same direction. It just is a little bit of a time saver that we'll be using a number of times throughout the run. Mm -hmm. And specifically when we uh, start heading towards Sorrow. Uh, White Paws holding on to that bash just a little bit longer, wanted to make sure that he had the angle that he needed to break the wall, allowing Rin to gain just the slightest advantage. And White Paws also doing a double bash right there to kill uh, the mortar shark and uh, make sure that the aim was true this is key duplication uh coming up here you collect the keystones you put them in the door and you take a death with a save placed just outside the scene where the keystone door is placed and then the game gets confused doesn't know what to do so it puts the keystones back in your inventory and the world allowing you to collect them twice and this is effectively what allows us to skip doing uh very sadly in a way <laughs> the upper half of uh ginzo and you know the beautiful escape sequence with the music um but we don't need to go there and clean the water to collect keystones that are in swamp anymore so uh it is faster and uh and uh we will also be performing a trick to break into swamp uh because the ginzo escape is supposed to drop you in there yeah what we're doing right now is why we had to touch to activate those teleporters before uh, so that we can teleport back to Ginzo and later, or I'm sorry, teleport back to Grotto. Later at the end of the run, we'll be teleporting to Swamp, just grabbing a little bit of additional experience on, uh, at the end. A little while earlier, Rin had that death that lost him about 45 seconds. He has since taken the lead, but only by, what, maybe 10 seconds tops, maybe less. Uh, I'll get a time for you here when they grab Ringo. Give you a different well, event on that. I'm going to start talking about Swamp, Ent Swamp Entry. You see this frog. We're going to use this frog that Rin has. Nice save. Almost knocked into the poison water. Is going to try to get into position to use two different frog projectiles to break into Swamp early. There's the first one. The second one has to be redirected via a double bash. And he got the phase. Sometimes that was not Rin's fault. Sometimes the uh, projectile just phases through. But that is maybe going to let Paws take the lead. Paws doing a different version of the Swamp Entry. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it is slower. It basically about evened out. Uh, Rin has like less than a second of a lead now. It was seven seconds heading into Swamp Entry. So uh, unfortunately, uh, frogs being magical wizards, uh, creatures of unknown mysticism, uh, sometimes that just happens. And uh, unfortunately for Rin, it has allowed Paws to uh, catch up that difference that he had so valiantly fought back for. However, you look at this though, Paul's doing some nice double bash stress on the lizard projectile to gain just a little bit of time back, and then Rin missed the stop tree for just like a split <laughs> second. We are almost exactly synced up again. And talk about things being really close. Everyone loved the suggestion of the um, five or dono train to get that glitch exhibition. I myself have thrown something in, and we've got some other donations which will be out after the race, but let's get that donation train going for glitches. Absolutely. Um, since we have Stomp on our, uh, in our arsenal, 
Now, one more skill off the checklist, we can start exiting. We're going to reuse the frog that we used for Swamp Entry, which we affectionately call Ringo because it makes a lot of noise on that log. We're going to use it. It almost got away from Rin. Was able to grab that. Nice job by Pause as well. Remember, as I mentioned earlier in the run, we will be doing quite a bit of experience routing throughout the entire run, including enemy uh, enemies and pickups in the world, but also ability cells. That was really close with Ren stomping down into the spikes there. I wasn't sure he had enough speed entering that scene to uh, be able to uh, skip the lasers like he did, but he did manage to do it. Uh, a trick just happened. Uh, you wouldn't have noticed it because that's what happens with Kuro cut scene skip is that you just don't notice it. Uh, but Bash effectively allows us to use a frog projectile to teleport over the cutscene trigger. This used to be a TAS only strat that Rin is going for trying to double bash this spider shot. Stomp into the wall, grab the shot. Oh, he just misses it. <laughs> clap, clap for the effort though. Clap for the swag. Yeah, his projectile was just a little bit low. It kind of uh, hit the floor and fizzled. And that also let White Paws uh, gain back time again. That so far has been the story of this race is that Rin has been playing just a little bit better overall, nailing a few tricks that Pauses have trouble with, but then losing little bits of time or in some cases, substantial portions due to deaths. Rin does still have a lead, but only by a second or two. Yeah, you can kind of argue that Pause's play has been a little bit more consistent, but as you alluded to with uh, Rin talking about how he's going to play aggressively, that does mean that uh, it's just a more volatile run for him. Uh, more things can go wrong, and uh, unfortunately, a lot of things have kind of added up here, and fortunately for us, though, has kept this race very close. Yeah, as we get into Valley, things are about to get very exciting, as if they weren't exciting already, uh, both Rin and Pause. Rin actually had some trouble with the what? barb, which just went out of bounds and then almost came back in bounds. Okay, <laughs> I have never seen that before. I mean, I judging from Rin's happened. face, judging from Rin's face, I don't think he has either. That's amazing. Uh, I know it can happen. I've seen it happen in various instances in Randomizer. Oh, and another big death from Rin there. Oh, that one hurts. Because he's got to watch this uh, peg stomp cutscene again. This is going to open up a pretty substantial lead for Paws. Uh, we'll double back to that bird thing when we get a chance. Uh, using the bird here, Paws, on the right side of your screen to stomp on the stomp aura. Uh, extends far enough to be able to break that wall collecting ability cell. And this is Fast Stompless. Yeah, Fast Stompless is a bit of a sequence break to break the rocks in an unattended way. The rocks uh, that you don't see, trust me, they're there. Pause is going to shoot that projectile at a particular angle, almost had that spider shot hit a wall, dash away successfully, got the ability cell before the projectile that he fired hit the rocks that's going to teleport him directly to the next skill, which we don't get from a tree. We instead pick up a feather that we knocked off of Kuro. And this is going to be Glide, which uh, we are not going to be using to get into Sorrow Pass. Uh, we are going to skip going to the Forlorn Ruins entirely to restore the Element of Wind. And we are instead going to use uh, an ability that we're leveling up here called Charge Dash. It's meant sort of as an attack ability, uh, charging at enemies and dealing damage to them. But if you shoot one up above you, Charge Dash, and cancel it with a jump, you get all sorts of delicious heights. And now, I imagine, no, no safety save there from Paws as we set up Sorrow Bash. Does take a hit and falls down, has to play this carefully now, probably placing a safety save at the moment, I would think, no? Oh, it's Resetting not just the position. He's resetting the bird's position because uh, you'll see the trick here, the way this works is that you have to manipulate these birds who will die on the spikes just like Ori does. Did not get high enough, has to reset, and just like that, Rin has a little bit of a lead again. This has been an extremely back and forth race so far, and... One more thing, their pause had a little bit of an off-kilter rocket jump, didn't get enough height, had to reset once again. Again, Rin over on the left is going to be the first to enter Sorrow Bash. I'm sorry, pass with a successful Sorrow Bash. It's now going to just keep rocket jumping right up. Yeah, so now <clears throat> this is where uh, Crazy Juggle is going to come into play. Uh, that ability cell that uh, White Paws got earlier back in Grove, Rin did not. Going to rocket jump here to get a projectile from the frog to break the ceiling, and then very rapid sequences of charge dash cancelling into stomp glides uh, in order to get this hit frog, frog up. No, he hit the uh, frog. Yeah. So he's got to go for uh, a backup here now. But the idea there was to take the frog all the way up in order to break the uh, ceiling that leads to sunstone and grab that early. This is going to allow pause to catch up from that uh, pretty disastrous uh, Sorrow Bash, and Rin has to reset. He killed the frog. Luckily, Rin did make a backup save. Could have been a lot more costly. 
did successfully get up. He's going to have to grab that keystone on the way. Meanwhile, Pause has actually pulled ahead. Was able to make it up top. We are going to see a small route divergence, but only uh, only temporarily. Pause. Once reaching the top of this corridor, is going to go left to hit the charge stone tree immediately. And then uh, later, come back to go up top for the sunstone, whereas Rin is going to go up top now and then come back down and go to charge stone. There are uh, reasons for this route difference. Yeah, it, this does save time if performed well for oh no. no yeah you saw the same thing i did rin doesn't have enough energy to do a charge dash to break the plant up there that he needs the energy in order to get the appropriate level up uh pause definitely pulling ahead now except uh, had a small death which is going to cost a little bit of time rin definitely showing a little more trouble than maybe i'm accustomed to seeing taking another attempt at this crazy juggle pause with another death on the right you can you can see the nerves here uh, in the runner's gameplay. That's for sure. Uh, not unanticipated, but uh, it is still a pretty good lead here for Pause. He's going to uh, start another SA, place a save just underneath the ceiling, charge jump into the spikes, and the aura from that charge jump will persist uh, on respawn, allowing him to break the ceiling as opposed to Rin's crazy juggle. And for the record. Crazy Juggle does not save time in Sorrow Pass. It saves time at that ability cell that Rin skipped earlier uh, next to Swamp. Yeah, one thing to point out over on the left, you see Rin just picking up the Sunstone and Paul's about to do the same. Rin still has to go to the Charge Snub Tree, though. So Paul's, I believe, still has a little bit of the lead. Uh, yeah, so Rin's not getting this laser cycle here. He's going to have to go collect Charge Jump and then double back out, whereas Paul's is going to be able to. Uh, they just go straight down out of Sorrow Pass. No energy for the Ghost Door, so Rin's got to lose uh, about four seconds there. Waiting for the door takes a hit uh, from some of the slime poop, uh, but he will safely make it to charge jump. And when you activate the tree, you get uh, an automatic save. So uh, that portion of danger anyway is uh, now passed for Rin as Paws is going to be heading into Misty Woods, and this is where the game starts to get really explosive. Meteor Kick, which is an inverted rocket jump, coming down into Misty, and uh, we're going to have some stomping and bash cancelling here with Grilios. Yeah, something that I don't think we've said explicitly, you see that energy on the bottom. Every single charge dash uses one energy, and if you're doing math, you may notice that we are doing far, far more than five charge dashes, despite only having five energy. The reason is that you can refund your energy from a charge dash through a number of methods, such as charge dashing into something that you bash, such as stomp cancelling. There are a number of techniques, so that's why from time to time you've seen the runners toggling on their UI, and while as, and also, as we mentioned, excuse me, Rin had some energy troubles. Yeah, and uh, I don't think we talked about it, but it's a, it's a pretty brief mention, so I'll say it now. The UI, for the most part, is off throughout the course of the run because it skips dialogue, but they will turn mm -hmm. it on when they want to monitor uh, health and energy. Yeah, Paul's uh, on the right, definitely with the lead in Misty Woods, uh, as opposed to some of the other areas we've been through so far, specifically that minor split up in Sorrow. Uh, Misty Woods is a relatively straightforward uh, area. We actually wouldn't have to come here, except that we have this climb skill, which we're not going to use much, but we will use it for a trick just a little bit later. With climb in our possession, Paul's then has to uh, make his way out of Misty Woods. Yeah, about a 10 second advantage for Paws right now at the activation of the Climb Tree. Uh, the rest of this uh, is of Misty Woods is pretty much just execution based. So uh, JD, if you want to update us on the Glitches exhibition, please. Yeah, absolutely. We are less than $50 away from unlocking that Glitch, that glitch exhibition. We saw that Dono train come in. Thank you so much. Let's send some good vibes over to these runners send some good donations over to the OAR and lock that glitch exhibition. Less than $50 away, everyone. As I said, there are a lot of really fascinating glitches in this game, some of which you see in this category, many of which you don't. So I think the glitch exhibition would be pretty entertaining to watch. One of my favorite sections here with the uh, stomp manipulation of the slime into the rocket jump up through the meatball corridor. Uh, rocket jump into a charge dash bash cancel into a midi boss on the right side of your screen for white paws. Uh, yep, you actually did see a mini boss there very briefly. Uh, you're not supposed to, uh, but that's okay. You didn't lose a whole bunch of time to that. So I, 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 I want to interrupt to say Rin again, low on energy, just has one remaining, which is fine because you get a level up from this mini boss. Rin's went a little bit nicer, but yeah, Rin has definitely had some energy troubles. Uh, gained maybe just a little bit of time 
uh, back on pause. We don't actually have to pick up uh, the torch and bring it back. We can just exit. Normally, if the enemy is due, you get a key to the second dungeon, but we're skipping it. So with that, pause is going to go back to that valley teleporter and head back towards Blackroot Burrows. Yeah, and Blackroot Burrows uh, has a second section underneath where we picked up Dash, uh, where we're going to find Grenade, something that you're not going to see a whole lot of use of. You'll see a little bit more of it on uh, Rin's side than you will on Pause. Uh, but we have uh, perhaps one of the more fascinating pieces of tech uh, called uh, grenade jumping, which is effectively a horizontal rocket jump. So uh, as much as we have to pick this up for uh, the category, all skills, uh, it is also super fun and uh, saves us 40 seconds right at the end of the game. Yeah, before we get to grenade, we have to traverse some lasers. With proper cycles, you can make it through. Just fine. Pause. Barely avoiding that laser. Rin doing the same thing over on the left, but with the save anywhere window open. Uh, pause is going to open his just before this cutscene. That is, I believe, the longest cutscene in the game. And again, Rin has to do a slightly unorthodox strat that he's trying to do behind this ability menu. Took a death from the baneling. Got sent up back to the entrance of Lost Grove. That is putting pause in a pretty comfortable position this late in the run there's only a few minutes left all the runners have left to do is get to the final dungeon mount horu uh and complete the final escape there's a grenade jump from pause on the right side of your screen uh that functions by charge jumping while holding onto a wall throwing a grenade and then jumping after it charging a charge jump i should say specifically for... one frame after it <laughs> yeah just just one frame uh, it's you know not a difficult thing to do at all Paused with a, a pretty risky Indiana Jones style play. Ren also nailing that grenade jump over on the left. You'll see a few more grenade jumps, most notably at the end to skip a portion of the final cutscene. But as Shafe said, in the beginning of this run, we said that there are a lot of costly deaths you could take. Most of those opportunities are now, are now gone. So barring a major error in the final escape, Ren has his work cut out for him to catch up. And talk of major things, I want to say that we have unlocked that glitch exhibition. Thank you so nice. much, chat, for participating in this train. But let's keep donations and lots of incentives still to be met here this marathon. Uh, that's awesome, guys. Thank you so much. You are going to be well rewarded for your money spent. White Paws with a grenade jump attempt over Horror Fields decides to not go for the second attempt. Is just going to go straight to the door uh, because I believe he's going to be going for a warp skip which means he's not actually going to get an energy refill um, upon activating Warm, uh, the final escape. So, pretty smart heads up play there from uh, from Paws. Yeah, here we are in the final dungeon, uh, but we aren't really going to do any of it. It turns out there's a trick called Door Warp, where if you press up to enter the door on the frame that the game loads, Paws did not get a first try, he'll take another attempt. You end up getting teleported to the origin of the scene which in this case happens to be down at the bottom. I mentioned that Rin needed some mistakes by Paws, and we are seeing them. Paws had some errors on the way to Horu and has now failed the orb three different times. If Paws doesn't get it right now, he didn't. Rin might be able to pull ahead with a first try door warp. There it is. Uh, there it is. Yep, they both get door warp. It is going to be execution in the final escape. That's what Let's you always go. in a race. You always love to see it. Are we going to see the warmth skip? Because if so, that could cause some problems too. There it is from Rin on the left. You'll see the camera doing some uh, some funny things. Uh, from pause as well, the portion of the escape blind. Rin is also going to go for some pretty risky grenade jumps throughout, which is going to save him just a little bit of time. I'd say the last scary barrier is this poison swim. Yeah, the runners are on five health, which is the absolute minimum you need to be able to get through this poison swim. They've got to manipulate the frogs by hovering over that, or the fish, sorry, by hovering over the water. Stomping down in, then bashing up. Rin gets through, Paws gets through, but Rin has spawned Crow and takes a death, opening up the window for Paws to steal the race in the final moments of the escape. All that's left is the grenade jump, sets it up, gets it, skips the cutscene, only... 40 seconds left of holding right, and that is GG for pause. Yeah, well done. There was a risk of a soft lock on that final grenade jump, so good job by pause uh, avoiding it. As we said, time is not called yet, but we'll call it out. There's just a little bit of cussing to go. Just a quick glance over to the left to see if we can get through the water again. Dave now has to do uh, a charge jump with Eastmon Kuro. That was successful as well. Anyway, time is coming up for pause just as soon as uh, Naro, his character from the prologue, crosses the second tree, so we'll call it out in just a few seconds. Ready, and three, two, one, time. 
Wow. For a moment. Oh my god, door war? <laughs> <laughs> this trick? Yeah, uh, so, pause. Um, a lot of things happened in this race. Uh, uh, I need to interrupt you. Rin's time is coming up in about uh, yeah. uh, eight seconds. We'll call that out as well in just a moment. And then yeah. I would love to hear from you, pause. Uh, just one yeah. moment, Rin doing some nice narrow hops. Let's say three, <laughs> two, one, and time. GG. So, a I lot happened in I was on P base up to, to Sorrow, and then on Sorrow I just decided to just fail Sorrow by like a trillion times. Oh my god. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, GG. That, that, that was a very exciting, GG. exciting race. Well done, both of you. I think we were Thanks. tied, like entering the end. We yeah, were the tied final... a lot of times. Yeah, there was a lot of back and forth. <laughs> Rin took uh, a couple of hefty death spas, allowing you to yeah. uh, to catch back up. But overall, pause. I think your play was sort of the more consistent. While Rin talked about prior to the race, playing fairly aggressively and. Uh, you know, that happens in, in Ori. You play aggressive, sometimes you get burnt. Yeah, um, I took a lot of stuff to save, so... Yeah, yeah, I played super aggressively myself, so... I When I saw you place that safety save in Misty after um, the rocket jump from the Franke, I was like, okay, good. <laughs> My heart slowed down a little bit. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, like... <laughs> I, took, I took damage and I was like, I'm not going back up there. No, <laughs> I'm just playing Zinga save. Yeah, same for me. That oh was gosh, an amazing was... race. Definitely a nail throughout chat. Let us give it up. Pause and room for an amazing, amazing display there. So many, so many amazing things there. Um, and uh, I hope that you guys had a real some time. Um, shout outs that you want to do before we go and hop into a glitch exhibition. Mm -hmm. uh... Shout Shoutouts to the Ori community, personally, because yeah. the Ori community is actually hecking amazing. I'm just gonna yeah. say this all right, it's one of the most welcoming communities I've mm. ever been a part of. It's, I don't know, everyone's super wholesome. And every, like, when I started running this, I, I just got help from the community. I didn't even reach out particularly to anyone because I have, like, it's hard for me to talk to new people. It's hard for me to get into communities. But like, the Ori community just went into my stream, hacking helped me a lot, helped me figure out a lot of tech stuff even, like PC stuff, not even even regarding the game. Of course, helped me with setups and stuff. Just, Ori is an amazing community. Only have positive words about it. Yeah, I can second that. The only reason why I still run this game, I think, is because of the community. They've been so helpful and so kind. We'll yeah, that. for real. <laughs> All for And of course, <laughs> of course, thanks to Grim and Shay for the commentary as well. Oh, thanks for inviting us to to do commentary for this uh, this wonderful race. Also, I do want to chip in um, on orirando.com. There is a randomizer <laughs> for this game and for Hell, Ori yeah. and the Will of the Wisps. I, I have to plug it. I have to. I love yeah, it. Yeah, I, I was going to yeah, do it. Rando, Rando's pretty, <laughs> one Rando's of the, pretty um, top tier. The swamp entry trick that we saw was actually discovered through the randomizer. I didn't oh, know that. Wow. I didn't know yeah, that either. Fun, fun, fun trivia. Haha. <laughs> All right, uh, I think that's it for us on commentary. We'll uh, let Rin get set up here for the glitch exhibition. And thanks again, everybody in chat, for donating and uh, contributing to a great cause and getting a great glitch exhibition going. Thank you. Excellent. Shape Grim, thank you so much. Pause and Rin, thank you so much for the awesome race. And we're going to yeah, even GG's more Rin. awesome Ori coming up. So speaking of donations, I'd love to head and rattle off the donations while we get set here for the glitch exhibition. Let's go ahead and take a peek at all of the awesome donations that helped make this reality in the final push. I uh, want to say big thanks to Dirk Mathis who donated $10 for the Randy, saying good luck to both White Paws and Renasar on this awesome race. Let's see if we get that glitch exhibition going after this, which we absolutely did. Uh, then we have another donation from Fire Power in the amount of $1. You could be thinking, wait, hold on. Um, but this donation is bait for someone who really wants to give a meme donation. And if you recall a little earlier in the chat, uh, we shared that there was exactly $69 to donate in order to be able to unlock base. And we, of course, absolutely smashed that out. Um, I had started out a five dono train here to go and get that started. And so we got some additional donations. Bursic Badger at $5. Choo Choo. Um, Fubio, who 
also had donated five dollars. Moonblaze Wolf, thank you so much for that dono. Uh, saying glitch dog uh, and uh, Kazuo who did five dollars saying get gotta get my donation in. Good luck on the goal, everyone. And then a whopping fifty dollar donation from Oasis. Comment Chuchu, you sent that train to the stars here, and with that we were able to get to this amazing glitch, glitch exhibition. So taking a look here at the stream, it looks like we are set, are, are all set. In. How are you going in terms of getting ready to show off some off stuff? While we're waiting, everyone, let's definitely continue keeping up those donation. We've got uh, another thing uh, to unlock. Um, we are at five dollars five hundred um, for a donation for McDonald's Treasure Land Adventure, and we also have a war going out for the Pack and Championship DX for a uh, style swap all throughout. So let's keep these donations going and. Uh, we are excited to be able to see even more awesomeness during this marathon. Okay. All right, so let's Vincent, who will show us some amazing here with Ori and the Blind Forest. So welcome back, everyone. Uh, so I still have a few tricks up my sleeve. Uh, some of the stuff that I'm going to show you has nothing to do with the category that we just ran, because uh, we don't allow out of bounds or teleport anywhere, and you're going to see why exactly, because it's such a powerful glitch. But first of all, uh, what I'm going to show off is uh, one of the most funny glitches that you can have. Uh, so when I'm in the water, I can't really... Let me kill this guy. I can't really save, right? I just... Um, like I'm just pressing my save button right now, it doesn't do anything. We can't really save underwater, but we can rekindle a save underwater. So... If we place a save down here and rekindle the save while underwater and we reload that save, some really interesting stuff happens. <laughs> so yeah, this is our S1. Uh, one of the funniest glitches. Uh, what you're hearing right now is just uh, Ori's breathing sound when uh, they come out of the water every frame. Because uh, we're currently in the air, but swimming and we can do a lot of stuff in this state we can uh, bash stuff we can even take damage like this and i'm gonna air swim to the next trick uh, let you guys enjoy this wonderful sound so the next trick is gonna involve one of those baneling guys that just exploded uh so over here there's this wall that we're supposed to bash the baneling into that we just stomped uh during the run but we can actually use the bangling in pretty creative ways. Uh, let me just turn off the debug mode for this so I can zoom out so you can see exactly what's happening. So if I go over here and attack this bangling a bunch of times, he's going to store the movement uh, that he took from me displacing him. And when we aggro him, yeet! So that was it for the first glitches. Uh, so this game has pretty broken physics, as you can see, and I'm going to exploit more of that. So for this next one, I'm going to go to Forlorn Ruins, uh, which is the one dungeon that we skipped thanks to Sorobash. And I'm going to use this orb mechanic. So when you have this orb laying around, you can kind of walk on walls like this, and you get your gravity shifted. And we're going to use this in pretty creative ways. So 
One of the tricks I mentioned, teleport anywhere is banned. Uh, this trick refers to teleporting from anywhere. We can't actually just warp anywhere we want. And that's going to allow us to do some pretty funky stuff. So if I set up a save anywhere and open the teleport menu, uh, I'm, still, I'm still able to move. You can still hear me uh, moving. And what I'm going to do is uh, go into this wall that's to the left that's going to kill me. And I'm going to teleport while dying. And pick up this orb. And I'm going to be able to walk around while carrying the orb. And, and now we can fly. So yeah, pretty good physics. <laughs> so what's going on right here is that uh, the... Um, Physics, like the gravity, the way the gravity goes isn't really tied to uh, Ori, it's tied to the use of this orb itself. So as long as we're carrying that orb, we can just go flying off. And I'm gonna go so high up that the game's gonna... The game's gonna be like, wait, what's going on? You're not supposed to be that up. And I'm going to void out and be like here. Anyway, uh, Mount Haru is wonderful today, isn't it? <laughs> And for the final glitch, uh, I'm gonna go back to Blackwood Burrows. Uh, so this trick actually showed up during the run. Uh, it's just really short, so you can't really see it. Um, I'm just gonna pick up the orb in Blackwood Burrows and get cancelled by a cutscene. And some weird stuff gonna start happening. Uh, Ori is now skateboarding, apparently. And the orb uh, has no idea what's going on. The orb kind of jumps around. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what causes this. It's probably uh, the game forgetting to like remove the picking up the orb animation. And I'm pretty sure this gets removed if we get the CP. Yeah, okay. And that's it for the Wix exhibition, guys. Thank you for watching. Rian, crazy things there. <laughs> love it, love it. Nice, man. This game's broken in the best of ways. <laughs> I know. I was wondering which one would you show up. I actually didn't know what the swim air, which is kind of funny. It's useful in Rendo. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was like, hmm, <laughs> this is totally useful. Yeah. That's crazy. Awesome. Well, chat, everyone, let's again give a big round of applause over to Rin, as well as to White Paws, Shave, and Grim. It led us through an awesome run of Ori in the Blind Forest. Um, this was really, really great to be able to see. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Good luck, Thank runners, for the rest of the marathon. Uh, just real quick, I, I would like yeah. to shout out the rest of the staff, because you guys are doing an amazing amount of back-end work, and... It's thanks to you that the marathons kept running. So keep up the good work, and thanks for having yeah, us. Yeah, I second that. I second that too. Absolutely, and thank you so much for sharing all of your amazing skill here. Now, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna uh, do a little different now. Um, if, for those of you who tuned in yesterday evening, uh, we had transitioned over to. Uh, live DJ set, and we are gonna do the same again shortly. So stick around. You're definitely going to want to tune in for some awesome uh, and to jam out with everyone here at the Fastest First Twitch. Um, if you are uh, curious, Fastest First Spring Specular is raising money for OAR, the organization, organization for Autism Research. Since 2008, OAR has awarded more than $1 million in scholarships to individuals with an autism spectrum for their post secondary education. They also help uh, produce resources to individuals seeking employment, as well as for businesses looking to hire them. All of these resources are available free of charge for those affected with autism. For more information, please visit www.researchautism.org. Use the exclamation point charity in the chat. What's going on today? The team's fastest this is a group of furry speedrunners dedicated to building a strong community that is welcoming and open. We currently host two online charity speedrun marathons per year in spring and fall, 